Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel. Today we're going to be installing a AirDog 5G 165 on our 2018 Dodge 6.7 Cummins, and we're going to be using a fleece SureFlow sending unit with it. AirDog sent us one of their new 5G pumps that we're going to install today on this 2018 Dodge. Now, in the interest of being able to do this installation and using a drop-in modified fuel canister, we've partnered up with Fleece and they sent us one of their Sure Flows. Now, the combination of these two is going to make for a very, very seamless install. Honestly, probably look just like it came the truck came on it. So, the new 5G pump from AirDog with the uh, new style regulator has been a really, really big hit for AirDog. And to be honest with you, lift pumps are a big part of our business here at Thoroughbred Diesel. So we're excited about this video. We're excited to do it on these on this new 6.7 Dodge truck. Uh, this is gonna be the first, uh, well, this is our first 6.7 lift pump video. And we look back, I don't know how, why, how, why we hadn't done one, but we've done them on five nines and whatnot. So we'll, this will be our 6.7 video and give you um, give you knowledge and give you visibility of that. So we're just going to talk just a little bit about the parts that we're going to be putting on the truck. We're going to talk a little bit about what comes in the AirDog 5G kit So uh, for this 18 Dodge. So this is the AirDog part number that fits the 2004 and a half to 2018 Dodges. Uh, and then it goes up after the CP4 went out. So uh, the 21 plus. So this basically is a lift pump that works with a in-tank pump, which we all know that the 2004 and up trucks all had an in-tank pump. So AirDog sends the provisions for you to be able to get around the in-tank pump. However, we're going to use the fleece SureFlow sending unit and we're going to leave our basket and our tank untouched uh, because we want to be able to go back to that original truck once the once the truck is gone and it leaves our hands. So what comes in your AirDog 5G kit? First off, you've got AirDog's new hose. They were blue hoses forever, but this is a 300 PSI uh, fuel grade hose. So uh, really, really nice stuff. You have all of your fittings, all quick connect fittings with AirDog, and then their machined aluminum straight thread uh, O-ring fittings. You have a hardware kit. You have the draw straw that comes if you so choose to use this. If you uh, use your fleece sure flow, you won't be using the draw straw, but we're still going to talk about it in the video. The new plates from AirDog are now powder coated, and you don't have to worry about rust on this or the paint flaking off or anything like that. Bolts right over the frame, really, really nice. Uh, the framework for the AirDog itself is powder coated as well. You have the new harness from AirDog, a uh, little bit better connectors on these and just a nicer harness. Um, everything in, in this is fully covered in the, uh, in the harness. And you have the, uh, one, of the, one of the things that these lift pump kits have now done is taken your signal or your on signal for the AirDog pump and tied it in with the factory harness. That makes it really, really nice. You don't have to go to a key on fuse anymore in the, uh, in the power distribution center. You're going to pick up your power just like you would to your stock lift pump. So this is seamless. Those are all factory connections there. Uh, and that's pretty much everything that comes in our AirDog kit. Now our SureFlow kit, uh, SureFlow kit comes with all the fittings that you're going to need to use with almost all of the aftermarket lift pumps. So it works seamlessly with that. Your return will actually return back to the basket on this SureFlow. So that means that you're going to be getting constant fuel uh, to your suction side of the fuel and it's just you're just not the fuel demand on this is going to be you know it's 165 gallon per hour this fleece sure flow makes sure that the fuel is going to be there for you when you need it and comes with a new obviously a new fuel level sensor uh, it comes with a new o-ring for the fuel tank the fittings and everything that you're going to need for that and then we are going to couple one more thing here this is going to be the fuel filter delete block uh, for this model Dodge, and that's going to get rid of our uh, engine bay fuel filter. So it's going to be a really, really nice uh, setup here. We're going to be able to get, you know, most of the things out of the, a couple things out of the engine bay, you know, give you a line of sight inside the engine bay. You're going to get a lifetime warranty pump in the AirDog 5G pump, increased filtration, and all the good things. And it's going to be a seamless drop in when we're coupling it with the fleece SureFlow in tank unit here. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our installation. We're going to get this truck in the air and start working on getting our tank down. All right, so we're underneath the truck and most of you guys are going to be doing this job in your driveway. So you're going to be doing this on your backs. I'll be thinking about you, but 
we put the truck on the four post lift so you could have visibility of everything that we're going to be working on uh, and getting the tank down uh, with this kit. Now, if you do a sump, obviously you're not going to have to do this, but there are going to be things that are going to be on top of the tank that you're going to have to loosen the tank up to be able to get the connections um, and, and so on. So when you're working on this truck, and I know a lot of guys don't do this, they, they just fight through it. I promise you, drop in the drive shaft, take four bolts out back here at the stump, drop the drive shaft out. You will thank me. It, it, it takes just a minute to do it. Just go on and drop the drive shaft. When you drop the drive shaft, we like to mark the yoke for phase of the drive shaft so you get it back in in phase. Um, you know, it's just one of those things. Uh, but now what we're going to do uh, is, and Adam is going to get me the GoPro and I'm going to show you the lines and stuff. This tank on these 18 trucks is just not as simple as just dropping the tank and go at it. You've got the DEF lines here, um, I, I make it a little bit different. The second, the primary fuel filter back here makes it a little bit different. So it's not your average everyday just drop of the tank. So we're going to set up, grab the GoPro. We're going to point those things out. We're going to show you what we do as we bring the tank down. All right, we're under the truck here. This is your DEF tank on this 18 truck, and it's got the larger of the two lines is your fill line, then you've got your vent line above that. Obviously, this isn't part of the fuel tank. However, the lines run along the inboard side of the fuel tank. I'm going to show you where you want to... Uh, there is a holder for those lines right here, and you just push this little, uh, little tab down, and then you just pull the lines out of the holder just like so and then what happens what that does is that gives you the ability to drop the tank make sure they get clear of that to drop a tank without grabbing on those hoses and then next back here at the back you can see you have your primary fuel filter right here the primary fuel filter has got two fuel lines on it running into it the one towards the back of the truck the rearmost line that is your uh suction line uh, to the, or I'm sorry, it's the, the feed line out of the tank into the filter. And then the forward line is out of the tank and up towards the engine compartment. You want to unhook both of those lines and only one line is going to go down with the tank. Uh, or you can, you can unhook these lines like I'm going to do and then just make a, uh, unhook them like so they will get unhooked from the tank and then you can decide what you want to do with the lines because this filter is not going to be in play anymore but we're going to unhook both of those lines just while we're dropping the tank uh, we're going to let the tank down just a little bit and then show you the top of the tank get everything unhooked from it but i unhook both of those lines uh, just to give myself a little bit you know a little bit of breathing room when we're bringing the tank down in case anything any of the lines get tight there all right, we'll go ahead and show you the next step of getting the tank down on this 18 truck. So I leave my front strap, I leave the nut on the strap, but all the way down. And then I'll put obviously jack underneath the tank. But on my back end of the tank, I go ahead and undo the strap, as you can see here, and give yourself plenty of room because this is where you'll be uh, detaching the fill neck, the vent, uh, there's a vacuum line back there or a vent line back there, a hard plastic vent line. I'll show you that. Everything is back there. And then with the back of the tank down, kind of at this angle, they actually have enough room up there to get to the lines and electrical connector. So I'm going to scale up here and try to do my best at showing you this stuff. Um, first we'll look at this vent line here. This hard plastic vent line, and I'm gonna to try to manipulate this to where you can see it. This comes off at the elbow, so just gently pull like so, and that'll pop right off. I hope you got to see that. Then you have your fill right here, and I'm gonna turn my screen back on so I can see what I'm looking at. All right, so you can see that fill right there, seven metric on that clamp, and you can just start working it loose like so, okay? Then you have another vent line and hope that they didn't do you dirty like they did me. The clamp was in a really, really bad position on that. I got that turned upright. You can just pull straight back on it and work it loose. Okay. And then you're down to your two connections here at the top of the tank. So this is the suction line I was telling you about uh, on, the, um, on the primary filter. You can just detach it from the other line 
okay just like so and then it can come down the tank so you don't have to do anything but then your uh your engine return is over here and it's got the old style clips on it and i'm going to try to get over there where you can see that it's got the old style clip so it's just got the two ears and then you pull the line straight back get it i'll have to get a tool to get that uh, and then i'll slide the electrical connector over oh, that oh, that one's not gonna fight me too awful bad and then we get the electrical connector off so all i gotta do is come back and get this fuel line this return fuel line which i just pinched the ears together just like we've showed you before yeah, it's gonna fight me. That's all right. I'll get a pair of pliers and take it down. So let me grab that, and then we'll uh, we'll show you dropping the tank down. Hope you guys were able to see that. I wanted to get up here and show you everything as best I could. All right. Once you've got all of your lines disconnected, you want to go ahead and start uh, removing your straps on the straps. Once you get them loose from the tank, you can just pick those up out of the holder and remove them and get them out of your way. I'll do the front strap. Uh, we've got the jack up and we've got it supported. And I've got the, uh, we've, we've got this back strap out here. What we'll do now is we'll take our front strap out. We'll get some help and we'll lower this tank down. All right, got our straps down. Our lines are clear. We're good to go. We're going to ease down on the tank with the transmission jack. Adam's down here helping me. Close the clamp off of the vent line. You alright, Adam? Yeah, I'm alright. All right. All right. Well, it's a good thing this jack moves so fast. All right. <laughs> So tank down, what we're, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna reset. Uh, we'll come back and show you the tank out. We're gonna get it out here on the ground where we can get to it and get our uh, get our shear flow in. All right, guys, we got the tank out of the, the 2018 Dodge right now. We're gonna go ahead and start putting our shear flow sending unit in, and then we're gonna do the fittings on the shear flow after we get it in the tank and get it mad because it's just easier to tighten and, and, and loosen uh, parts up of the shear flow. So we're just gonna go ahead and get this in the tank. So before you start working on the sending unit tank, you want to get everything clean on top. I keep compressed air with me because when I start working on this locking ring, uh, it'll knock a bunch of crap loose. And before I take it off the last time, I'll actually go and, and blow everything off. So we uh, we'll go ahead and, and take our locking ring off here. So to unlodge your locking ring, you can look at the locking ring the way that these tabs are made. And these tabs have an indention in them and they lock at one point uh, of the ring itself. Okay, so you want to go, uh, you want to go opposite of that ring because you want to get the ring out from underneath of this in this clearance right here. So the way I'm facing it, we're going to be turning the ring counterclockwise uh, to, uh, we're going to be knocking the ring counterclockwise here. So there's these notches on the outside of the ring. Use those notches when you go to, um, to take the ring off because you don't want to hit inside of these notches here because That'll, you know, you can deform them and mess up your locking ring. So we're going to go ahead and hit it a couple of times and uh, get the ring working. Once I get it like that right there, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and hit it with a little bit more air. I want to check and make sure that my sending unit itself didn't come up. So I'll set that ring back down there. And then I'll hit it with a little bit more compressed air. Okay. One thing I forgot to show you is taking this uh, clip here off. So this is for the engine return. So you'll need to put this clip on your fleece uh, sure flow. So to do that, there's these two ears right here that are middle of the body of that. 
what I do is I just very, very gently get a small screwdriver behind it and pry those out one at a time. And then that'll let it come over the locking or the lip of the, of the push to lock or push to connect. Just like that. So, so we can take that off and just sit it in my pocket. Alrighty. And then remove a ring like so. And then the ring will come right off the fuel line. Now you'll look at orientation. There's a locating tab right here on the tank for the diesels and it's even marked right there. So that's the way that your uh, fleece sure flow is gonna go. So we're just gonna lift this up here. So it's gonna have fuel in it. So we're gonna lift this up. We're gonna let this drain out in the tank before we take it out. Adam's over here giggling, and I have no idea what he's giggling about. I think I know what he's giggling about. But. All right. So to bring our sanding unit up, and then you just want to watch for your float level, just like so. All right, we're going to go ahead and put the sure flow in the tank now, guys. I like to, before I put my sure flow in, before I put my locking ring and everything on, I like to take the fittings out of the sure flow. You don't have to necessarily do that. I just find it to be a little bit easier to to get everything together so um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and uh fleece send you a new o-ring for your tank in the kit put a little bit of light lubricant on here and i'm going to sit it down in the recess of the tank where the where the seal fits next we're going to put our new float arm on the fleece sure flow sending unit and you can kind of see how that goes but when you're when you orient the float arm Obviously, the float down is empty, so that kind of tells you. And it fits into the it fits into the uh, uh, to the sensor on the sure flow really well. I just like to keep my fingers behind the sure flow basket. That way, when I push it, the arm into the little plastic thing that holds it, it doesn't break through there. So you know, no problem with that. I've never heard that happening. It's just just something to think about. So go to put your sure flow in. You want to put the arm end in first. And then once you get down to about the sensor, you'll notice that you have to push the sure flow just a little bit, pinch it to go by the tank. No big, you don't have to, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to break it or manhandle it. You just got to get it clear of it. So remember the orientation of your sure flow has got the tab just like the stock one does. It goes right, right there in our spot. So we're going to just go ahead and put just a little bit of light pressure on that, fit everything in, make sure it, it goes down well for us. So we're gonna set our locking ring on, just real easy. Watch your electrical connector here on the sure flow for your, for your level. Just work it around there. All right, and then I just, just barely start my locking ring and that'll hold everything down while I get everything lined up there to make sure it's clean and and whatnot. And then I'll just kind of push just a little bit more and just kind of try, I try to put as much of it in by hand before I have to start hitting it with a chisel. So that's what we'll do now is we'll turn this around with a chisel um, or my punch until it, the locking ring locks. I want to double check my O-ring one more time, make sure I'm not higher on any sides. If you're higher on a side, your O-ring's probably out of line there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this clockwise here. Couple of taps, get it going. And kind of move around the tank hit it in different areas don't hit the same spot all the time
close. Just a little bit more. There it is, locked in. So you can kind of see when you lock that in, your uh, tabs on the locking ring will correspond to uh, the side of the locking ring that holds everything in place there. So we've got our, our sure flow locked down. Now what we're gonna do is get our fittings together and assemble the head portion of the sure flow. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do install our fittings in our sure flow sending unit. And we wanna talk about each individual fitting. And the first fitting we're gonna be talking about is the suction side fitting uh, for the sure flow. Now this fitting actually doesn't come in the kit with the, with the fleece sure flow. This is actually in the air dog kit. This is the half inch quick connect fitting that normally would be used in the draw straw. So we're not using the draw straw assembly here. So we're going to roll this fitting over and we're going to be using this fitting on the sure flow. This, the suction side of the sure flow is, uh, is the side that has the arrow pointing out or away from the away from the, the uh, sure flow block. Then the next fitting is going to be this quarter inch quick connect fitting. That's gonna be used in conjunction with the engine return line. Don't forget about this little plastic clip we showed you taking off. I actually put this in the line before I put it back onto this fitting. So that's going to uh, go on the sure flow side that has the arrow pointing back to itself. And then finally, is going to be the return for the air dog. So this is suction from the engine from the air dog to the engine. This is going to be engine return back to the tank. And then we have to make a provision for the air dog return. And we're going to we're going to put it in this side that fleece uh, has a plug in for you on the SureFlow sending units. So you just want to remove this plug. And when you remove this plug, just realize that there is a spring and a little pressure regulator in there. And when you take the plug out, the spring's gonna, gonna have just a little bit of tension on it. But you wanna make sure that you keep that spring recessed into the cup there. And uh, you don't want it to be out. And then the way that this fitting that comes in the pure, in the SureFlow sending unit, it is actually gonna be cut so that spring can ride inside of that. You just go ahead and install that fitting on the sure flow there. And then we'll just tighten it down. Now I'll go through and tighten each one of these fittings and these are all O-ring fittings. So you don't have to, you don't have to strong arm these, just snug them down O-ring. But the 90 degree uh, fitting that comes in the fleece sure flow kit, I'm going to point that with the fitting kind of pointed just up ever so slightly away from this vent too and then i'll have my return line will run up on top of there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through and i'm going to tighten all these fittings down here and get everything snugged up and then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut away from the tank because the only thing that i'm going to do that you probably won't see on camera is i'll go ahead and, and put my uh, air dog hose on this this is a push to lock fitting doesn't or yeah push to lock fitting this does not need a hose clamp on it i'll go ahead and put my uh, my air dog line onto this fitting, have it ready, and I'll just leave it um, full length and then I'll cut it once we get back to the air dog. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and put our air dog together and we're gonna get the air dog mounted on the frame rail. And the reason we're gonna do that is we'll have access to the bolts for the mounting block uh, with the tank down. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, but what we'll do next is we'll cut in and show you assembling the air dog to its mounting bracket. All right, guys, now we're going to show you how to assemble the air dog pump to the mounting bracket. So I'm going to show you how I set this bracketry up for this 2018 Dodge truck. And then we're going to get underneath the truck. We're going to show you where we mounted it. Honestly, on this configuration, short bed, crew cab, three quarter ton, there's really pretty much only one spot that this can go. So uh, before we start assembling a pump, just realize that when you're mounting the pump on the truck, that 
uh, the, the pump can either go on the inside of the frame rail or the outside of the frame rail, whatever works for the configuration that you have. Um, the, they give you air dog, uh, these brackets are drilled for several different mounting locations of the pump itself. So you've got a whole lot of different options here um, that, you, that you can use with this. So it makes it really, really nice is on mounting. And I'll be honest with you with these newer trucks, we're getting fewer and fewer mounting spots on this frame rail as you know these trucks evolve and, and more more things are added to the system uh, so on so all right we're gonna go ahead and show you how to uh, mount your uh, air dog pump to the um, to the plate itself so the first thing that we do is we work on is mounting the pump bracket itself to the uh, sandwich plate you've got beveled holes in here the beveled holes take these four Allen bolt, uh, Allen bolt screws. And for this 2018, and I wanna to try to talk about this as I go through, for this 2018 truck, we're gonna be using uh, the second most up set of holes, second and third uh, up set of holes for this, for this setup. So that's just what works work best for us. And before you put the uh, bracket on you you can use the spacer if you want to if you don't want to use the spacer you'd have to get some shorter bolts but we're going to use the spacer for this truck configuration spacer goes on just like that and then you put your pump bracket on right there and what you'll do is once you get your pump bracket on just sit down on the table here grab my nuts and lock washers and we'll put those on real quick while everything rolls around on the table chaos ensues now i'm not going to tighten everything down i'm just going to show you how how to how to mount the how to mount everything up here So next, once you've got your bracket assembled there, what you'll do is you'll actually go through and you'll get the four uh, smaller Allen head bolts. And the pump body itself is recessed to accept these bolts and they'll be flush with the top of the, the pump, just like so. So you've got bolts and lock washers with those as well. Then you take your pump, and what I do before I set my pump on is I remove my filters, so I've got access to the to the fasteners. Just set her pump on the bracket like so. All right. And nuts and lock washers here again. Getting that first one started by yourself is a is a chore. So we'll go through and we'll put the four lock washers and four nuts on here real quick.
All right, now before I put my filters on here, I'll go through and I will tighten up all my fasteners here. Just like so. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our pump fittings on. So on the back side of your pump, you've got a single, uh, you've got a, a single fitting will go on the back, and then the front side of it, just depending on how you're looking at it, you've got two fittings. You'll have the to the engine fitting and then the air dog return fitting. So this is going to be our suction side from the tank. So this will get one of our half inch quick connect O-ring fittings. We'll start it in the pump and we'll just snug it down. Again, this is aluminum and it's an O-ring fitting so you don't have to manhandle it. And then the smaller of the two and then the to the engine delivery. So to the engine, again, gets a half inch male quick connect. And then the air dog return is this 3 8 quick connect. Uh, and then it will go here as well. So this is an O-ring fitting. So again, don't over tighten it because you will strip stuff out. So that's it. That's assembly of an air dog to the brackets. Now we've got another sandwich plate. On, it'll be the back side of this and that'll come into play when we get underneath the truck. We'll show you that. These three bolts will be used to mount the plate to the, to the truck. So we'll tighten everything up. Then we'll put our filters back on uh, and then we're going to show you the location of where we chose to mount this on the truck. We're going to show you uh, where we're going to mount this AirDog 5G at. So on this 2018 truck, this is crew cab, short bed truck. What we ran into here was pretty much the only, okay, I mean, let me back up just a little bit. Adam's playing with some lighting and uh, checking this all out. It's kind of like a little, little disco underneath the here. Um, so I, we made mention of this early in the video. The air dog can be mounted either inside of the frame rail or it can be mounted outside of the frame rail, okay? You get the fittings inside of the kit for correct fuel line routing that you won't have to kink anything. Um, but, you know, again, you can go inside the frame rail, outside of the frame rail, outside of the frame rail. There's really been a push in the last, I don't know, let's just call it 10, 12 years that we've, we've been mounting these a lot more on the inside of the frame rail. Um, this truck, we just couldn't do it, and I'll show you why uh, once we get around here. Uh, I'm going to show you a backside clip of this, but we're going to show you on the outside of the frame rail where we're going to mount. Right here in front of the uh, in front of the parking brake cable is where this is going to go. And then you've got enough distance with the spacer block that AirDog gives you to have enough space for if that, uh, if that parking brake cable comes in contact with this channel, it's got plenty of space to do it. So the pump itself is actually going to mount right about there. And I just wanted to show you that where we were going. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to fire up the GoPro and we're going to show you backside of this, what we had to do to this brake line and, and fuel line pack. There's a wiring harness here, what we had to do to adjust all of that. Uh, and then we'll we'll show you the mounting on this. Mounting on it, easy sandwich plate, two bolts hanging at the top. You got one bolt at the bottom. Uh, nut and lock washer on it, so that makes it real easy. So we're going to show you the back side of the frame rail and what we were up against, and then we'll we'll hang the pump on. Inside the frame rail here, now your tank, uh, your forward strap is going to be right here, so you're going to have quite a bit more tank here. So uh, just between the tank to the to the DEF tank, there's just not enough room to mount this this air dog on the inside of the frame rail. So that's why we're going on the outside of the frame rail. But there are some there are some things that you're going to have to do. So this line pack is actually got a push pin that connects it to the rail here. What we did there, if you want to leave the line pack together and these holders for that, but what we did was we cut the Christmas tree or the push pins on the back of this. We just cut that smooth where uh, that was okay. And then there was a, a wire holder for this loom. And what we're going to do here is we're going to, and I'll show you without the bolts in it, we're going to slide our sandwich frame is going to be just about right behind that uh, level right there. And then, then we're going to, we'll move that pump forward as best we can for positioning. So I just wanted to show you on the back side of this frame what we had to do to get this right. Uh, but this will work really, really well. It'll be clean and a, and, a, and a nice clean install here. So we're going to go ahead and put our bolts over uh, in it and uh, show you 
uh, once the actual pump is hung on the frame rail, uh, the bolt positioning and everything. All right, just wanted to show you everything mounted up here. We've got our bolts in. Uh, you've got to turn the bolt where the proximity to the tank here, you've got to put the bolt head on the inside of the frame rail and the outside of the frame rail, you'll have your excess. But there's the pump mounted uh, right there. So we'll go ahead and tighten. We're, we actually won't go ahead and, and fully tighten everything down, but we've snugged it down and I'll leave it loose until I get the tank up. So that way I need, if I need to make an adjustment in the pump, I can, but I've tried to leave myself enough room between um, the little storage box here to where I can get a fuel line on it. Same thing back here. You want to make sure that you left enough room for the parking brake cable, not to contact anything. When I bring my lines out, I want to make sure my lines stay away from that parking brake cable. So we're in pretty good shape there. And if you need access to your regulator, you got it right there. You can get a right angle uh, Allen wrench on it and still get in there. So we've got access to everything and that's critical, but we want to leave this loose so we can move it back and forth uh, as we need to. So now it's time to bring our tank in and move our tank and put our tank up. We've got our hose attached to our tank here. And what I do is I go ahead and attach my hose to the um, the extra uh, return port that's on our, our fleece sure flow here. And I've got this 90 degree elbow, I've got this bent slightly up. So it keeps the hose away from this uh from this vent hose right here so we've got we've got that on we've got that pushed on the push to lock fitting remember you don't need a uh hose clamp here because again this is push to lock i leave the hose full length just like this when we put the tank up i'll go ahead and i'll make my connection at my air dog return and then the remaining hose i'll make my other two connections but we'll show you that but now it's time to get the tank back in the truck we'll get show you getting the tank set up and get it back in the truck and get it uh get our lines attached uh and then just making out the rest of our connections so underneath the truck we've got the track we've got the tanks uh strapped on transmission jack again you guys probably doing this in your driveway so however you're doing it what i like to do with the wiring harness i like to lay the wiring harness out all the way to the truck this truck's got enough clear enough shot up front to be able to get the relay. So your relay uh, and then your constant power source will be in front of the truck. So I just lay those out. Then I run my wiring harness along here. Adam don't trip. <laughs> this is our connection for our pump power. And then this is, or I'm sorry, this is connection for power. Adam, uh, oh, you like. This is connection that we will be making at the air dog pump for power to the pump. But this is the connection that we'll actually be making power that we'll be making at the tank to catch the power signal from the truck that uh, sends power to the pump in the tank that is not going to be functional anymore. Uh, but this is that going to be that that wiring harness. So air dogs come up with this a few years ago. This makes uh, these installations really, really nice because you don't have to hack up your uh, hack up your uh your fuse box looking for a key on power source so what i like to do is my pump's here so i'm going to orient everything kind of going this direction both my fuel lines and my electrical side of it but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and bring my wiring harness over this crossbar right here and what i'm trying to do there is just keep everything above um everything above that crossbar because uh, that gives us, uh, th that way we don't we know we're not gonna be interfering when we bring the tank up. Then we're gonna connect it back to the factory harness here. So push that into it clips and then, uh, then, then clip it over. So again, you can see that's the power wire that's gonna make power for the pump, but then we'll make this connection at the tank once we get the tank up. So I'm just gonna leave that right there for right now. That's good to go. So now we take our hose off of our tank that is hooked up again, remember, to our air dog return. So we're just going to uncoil the whole loop of fuel hose that air dog sends to you. And our orientation for this is we're going to try to stay above the DEF lines and then above this crossbar and then out to the uh, out to the air dog pump. So you want to keep this going in that direction like i said and you want to watch sharp edges there you want to make sure that the hose isn't going to be any anywhere near those sharp edges i'll actually make uh, a uh, connection to uh, those hoses there or i will uh, zip tie it to that main wiring harness and the reason why i'm doing that again is to keep it away from that, those sharp edges but 
this is the route we want to take with this. So I'll go ahead and pull almost all of the fuel line out of there and get it ready for that. So I won't do anything here. I'll coil this back up and I'll get it out of the out of the way of my transmission jack and I'll lay it on the lift over here. But that just shows you kind of how we're routing everything. Again, getting it in the location of where the air dog is and uh, giving us the ability to go ahead and put our tank up uh, without too much uh, hoorah there. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll move our tank back and get everything set up and kind of show you making our connections back there. One more thing that we're gonna do before we uh, move our tank up is the other end of our hose. This is going to be our suction side of the hose. So this is just continuous loop of the hose. We haven't made any cuts here. So we've hooked it up for the return of the air dog and we've got it over our frame rail. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put our, um, our half inch um, push to connect suction side fitting uh, on the other end of the hose. And so then what we'll do there is we'll make that connection at the air dog once we get everything up and then all that will leave us with is the the rest of the hose after we make our cut will be from the air dog to the engine so these push to connect fittings put a little bit of lube in my hose there too Make it easy. so we'll go ahead and run that on just like so and of course I got it all over my hands there. So now, again, this is the continuous, just, just continuous loop of the, of the hose. We haven't made any cuts there. We're gonna run it right straight back through the same path that we brought our return. And we'll have it ready to go. Uh, I'll actually, and where Adam's standing right now, I'll actually run it exactly where uh, exactly where that is above the DEF line. So, and the reason being, the, no problem with the between the cab and the frame mount there. Uh, but if you notice, when the tank goes up, the DEF lines are just about uh, touching the tank. So we know we want to be above that, and uh, that'll have everything just fine. And then we'll. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll route everything there. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, when, uh, when we cut, I'm gonna move it over top of those DEF lines and I'll make my connection on, actually, I'll add a move for me so I can make that connection. Well, like I said, I'm just gonna run it right here along with the return line and go ahead and make my connection with the tank. And as I go up with my tank there, I'll just pull my slack out and then I'll make my cuts at the pump where I need to. So we're set up. We're gonna get the camera set up. We're gonna go ahead and start taking the tank up and re and uh, uh, reconnecting all of our connections that we took as the tank went down. All right, I wanted to say one more thing before we bring our tank up on the wire and harness that I've forgotten about and I was sitting here thinking and I was looking through before I took it up. And what I like to do is I like to route the wiring harness with the, the original wiring harness on the inside of the frame rail. And I started that on the outside of the frame rail. And what's difficult about that is, is when you get to the front and you get to the relay, you can't get the relay from the outside of the frame rail to the inside to, work, to go up in the engine bay. So that's what I did. I just rewrite everything on the inside of the frame rail going along with the original wiring harness and that laid it in there perfectly. So now, now we're ready to take the tank up. All right, we're up here up close and personal on the tank, uh, getting ready to, to start pushing everything up. Uh, first connection that I make as we go up, and we're still quite a ways away, is the connection for the air dog uh, lift pump. So we've got that in. So now we're going to start taking it up, and then we'll be working towards getting our filler neck on and, and then our vent uh, hose on and tighten down seven metrics on those. So we're going to start taking the tank up. And then we'll cut back and show you the connections that we make for our uh, engine return. Don't forget your little plastic clips inside of the engine return line here. You want to make sure that those are in. And then keep your lines straight as you're going up. You want to keep the slack out of them as you're going along too. So, uh, First line as we get close up here that we're going to be able to hook up is our factory return for our injectors. CP3 pumps. We just push that up till it clips. And we know we've got a good connection there. And then your wiring harness is good and it's not 
caught anywhere and then your hoses are good not caught anywhere i was able to go ahead and get the uh, vent hose on and the only thing that i like back here at the back is my last connection for the filler neck and then of course this vacuum hose as well so i won't be able to go pro the rest of this but you just take the tank up and you get these connections on so that's what we're going to do here and then we'll show you putting our straps on all right so we're going to make the two connections for the air dog return and the uh suction side of the air dog so like i said we've got one continuous loop of hose what i did before we put the tank up here is we went ahead and we marked the fuel lines uh, for the return. So I know that th that's this side of it's gonna be returned. And uh, didn't make mention, but got our tank back up, got our straps on, uh, really nothing a whole lot I can show you there. Do not forget on the outside of the tank to make sure that you get the DEF lines lined up there, the vent uh, for the DEF lined up and put back into its location on the tank. There wasn't a whole lot that we could show there and it gets dark underneath these trucks. So, um, so, but it's, it's really nice to mark that return line so you know which line is the first line you work with. So to make my connection here, the return for the air dog is gonna be the smaller of the fittings and uses the nine degree that's inside of the kit right here, but it's a half inch too. So I'll kind of mock my line up here where I want it. And then I will cut my hose. Could have got a little bit sharper cutting knife here. Put a little bit of lube on the fitting. Now this is the uh, 5 16 fitting. All right, the 5 16 90. So I just go to my hose and put the 90 in it. All these fittings are pushed to lock, so just push them into it. Bottom out and then take the line, clip it on your return, and like so. And it should naturally, with that 90 on it, should keep you away from that parking brake cable. So we're good to go there. So now this is going to be our suction line. Same thing on this side. We're going to go to the forward side of the um, of the air dog pump. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to route my fuel line forward, and just like so. side of my return line here. So what I'm doing is I'm just moving my return line and hooking it back up. And then what that is going to do is the line naturally now is kind of going to lay correctly there. Okay. So the tension on it is going to keep it high and keep it away from that parking brake cable. So I'm going to kind of bend my line out here where I need it. Take a raw guessment, just depending on where you put this. You can go a couple different routes with it. You can use the 90 degree if you want to. The kit comes with a 90 or it comes with straights. Uh, I'm going to use the straight here because I feel that the 90 is going to be needed to route everything and get it going uh, back forward. Wait a minute, I'll take that back. I am going to use the 90. I'm going to use the 90 here on the suction side because that's going to give it a little bit better fitment here and I'll have a better, um, I'll have just a better natural length on the line. So I'm going to kind of mock that up where I want it and what hose length I want it at. So got that marked right there. So again, this is the suction side. All right. So now that approximately leaves you with, I don't know, what do you think, Adam? What is that, 12 feet or so? Something like that, 12, 15 feet of hose. So you got plenty enough hose to get you back into your engine bay. So again, I'm gonna use my nine, to, nine degree fit here. This is the nine degree half inch. Put a little assembly lube on it. 
right. and through the holes. <clears throat> all right, make sure you get it all the way. And then push her on the suction side. So that's got our suction and our return left. And now all we've got to do is start prepping up our uh, to the engine portion of the line. So while you're here, if you want to, what you can do is you've got your electrical connector for the drop is already pretty well here and in place of where it needs to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull that. Actually, get it on the back side of the fuel line. All right. We're going to bring that just a little bit forward and we'll make that connection at the pump right here and push it till it clicks so we've got our electrical connector at the pump we've got that routed and done so and now of course we'll tuck all that in and um and zip tie it where it needs to be but that's got it pretty well cleaned up, but now we're gonna go ahead and get our fitting ready for our delivery portion of the hose. So what you can do here is just go ahead and grab one of your half inch fittings straight. Put a little bit of lube on it, of course. Go ahead and put it into the hose. All right. And then the last connection that we have at the pump is to the engine. And that is right beside of the return line. But what we'll do with this is we're gonna route this to where we can make a nice sweeping loop because we've got plenty of hose to do it. As you can see, we're gonna loop that for a nice sweeping loop and get it going back towards the front of the engine. And I'll probably route it on the outside of the frame rail and then once I get close to the front of the truck, then I'll probably make the transition inside of the frame rail. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna set this up for a long sweeping loop so it doesn't get kinked up and uh, get it headed towards the front. So now we just got clean up underneath of the truck. Um, we've got our, so we got our pump mounted and fuel lines, uh, again, routed back to the tank where they need to be. And then we have fuel lines going to the front of the truck on the inside of the frame rail, top of the frame rail. Um, but it, they end up here on the, in, on the inside of the frame rail because that's going to get us into the engine compartment easier. Wiring harness ran along with it. I've zip tied that down here. So what I need to do now is now that I know the final resting point of my pump, uh, I can tighten up my bracket. And this kind of sucks because on this truck, you've got to do it this way. Some of the older trucks, you've got clear visibility. You know everything's going to clear. But I had to get the lines on this to make sure that the lines were all going to clear my parking brake cable, which they are, there's not gonna be any contact there. So we can go ahead and tighten this pump uh, bracket down. So 9 16 here, um, and I've got uh, long reach 9 16 If you got them, that makes it really easy. And then you can get behind here and hold it and then tighten it up. So I'll tighten my pump bracket up. I'll put my filters on and tighten them up, which we'll come back and we'll loosen those uh, when we go for our priming sequence. And then I will put my drive shaft in and then I'm ready to bring the truck down. I know you guys, you know, a lot of you are gonna be doing this in your driveway, but this is the stuff that we'll be working on before we're working in the engine compartment. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna clean everything up here, uh, do these final points, make sure we've got all of our zip ties good to go. I've got my fuel and my, uh, my harness ready to go up front. So we're good to go there. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get this cleanup done and then we'll take you into the engine compartment. All right, underneath of the hood, the two things that we're going to do is we're going to have to do our electrical side and we're going to have to do our fuel hookup side at the CP3 here. So I want to kind of show you how I do this. Um, first thing I do is I like to go ahead and do my electrical hookup. And what you're going to have underneath the hood is you're going to have your constant power and ground, which we'll hook to the battery here in just a second. I route that along this fender well underneath of the lift arm, kind of up here around the fuse box. And then I'll make the connection at the at the terminals wherever is convenient. But um, something I've done over the years that's been different. I used to when I installed uh, when I installed these wiring harnesses. I always used to like to mount them to the firewall where it was nice and neat. Um, but I tell you, 
this is one of the first things that you're going to look at diagnosing when you think something's gone wrong with your lift pump is right here at the relay because the relay is going to be really is going to be the focal point of where you're going to figure out if you've got if you think you've got a lift pump problem or you do have a lift pump problem this is going to be the focal point of what your uh, easiest way to diagnose it because it's just a uh, normal everyday five pin relay on these and what you've got in here is you've got a uh, you've got a uh, ground you've got a uh, uh, a uh, uh, power uh, all-time power you've got constant power in it and then you've got trigger power uh, from your key on power source and then that delivers out to the pump so if you want to figure out what's going on why your pump's not running you want to start uh, you can check that at the relay after you've checked this fuse this little inline fuse is to the power trigger wire going down the pump so if this fuse blows a lot of times what you can look at this and say is uh, either you've got a restriction in the filter or maybe a restriction in the setup. Uh, it's just pulling too hard on the motor and it'll pop that fuse. So that's a good place to start on that. Um, so just these are two very good diagnostic ports, we'll call them, that you want to get access to. So I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I don't use self-tapping screws anymore, even though it comes with the, uh, that tab on it. What I do is I just try to make sure I've got my wiring harness away from the steering shaft down there and I'll put it, I'll put this wiring harness, I'll fold it over and zip tight to where I can get to it and I can make those types of diagnosis there. So I'll clean that up and do that. But uh, what I like to do now is I'll do my electrical portion of this and then um, we will put our fitting in the CP3 pump and then Adam and I are gonna change, but I'll just talk about this fitting. This is the fitting in your air dog kit that is a little bit heavier. Um, it's not the uh, the aluminum pieces that are the aluminum fittings that go on the pump. This is a little bit of a heavier duty piece. This actually goes into the back of the CP3 pump. It's got a ceiling washer that comes with it. And I'll show you where that goes on. So um, I'm going to do my electrical portion and then I want to put that CP3 fitting in and get my line disconnected. We're going to switch cameras and I'll show you that being disconnected. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fire it up and we're going to prime our pump. I don't cut my line. I like to leave it full length and I'll get myself a bucket here. I'll test my pump out and get it running, get it running into a bucket of fuel, and then I'll make my cuts on my line and get it hooked into my CP3. All right, we're down in the engine bay now and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting our stock fitting out of our CP3 pump. Now the stock CP3 line is has got two releases on it and when you unhook it from the pump, if you've left all of your stock lines in place like I have, you're going to get some leak at the back. So we've got a pan back there to catch that up, to pick that up. And then we want to get this fitting out of here. And you want to be really, really careful when you're removing this fitting from the CP3 pump because your FCA uh, on your CP3, one of the torque head screws is right underneath of it. So it's just kind of a little bit hard to get to. So. Um, you just get your 11 16 wrench is what I use. I use open-ended wrench and I'll just put a little bit of pressure on the fitting and get it moving. And usually once you've done that, you can come out to the end of the fitting and then that way you know you've, you're not running into the uh, fitting for the improp or the FCA. So we'll just go ahead and spin that out with our fingers. Remember CP3 pump. All right, and when it comes out, you want to make sure that the ceiling ring comes out with it. So we see that that's there. And just make sure you don't have anything else at the back. And then we're going to install our air dog fitting right into the back of it. Now this is a larger size on this one. Uh, you will be using a little bit larger wrench, 13 16 for this one. And again, you just really want to watch what you're doing when you're tightening this up, that you don't make contact with that uh, screw on that FCA. You can get yourself socket if you want to. And if you've got a thin enough socket, that'll clear that. But uh, I don't know that, you, that you'll have one of those in your toolbox. But anyway, 13 16 so we're going to tighten this fitting up. And then we'll show you getting the, the pump primed up before we cut our line.
right, so we've got our fuel line measured out and length, uh, length out and cut. Uh, we've got our straight last uh, half inch push to lock. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that on our fitting. We've already primed the pump, so we know we're good on that. We just wanna make sure that this fuel line, just like our electrical line, it doesn't get in the way of the drive shaft uh, or the steering shaft. If you have to make any, uh, any zip ties, now's the time to do it. So time to fire up the truck, and see what the pump sounds like. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you. When we were setting up for this shot, Adam and I, and I said, Adam, just turn the key on for just a second and just make sure that we got power to the pump before we set up for the prime shot. Uh, it picked up fuel. So it's already prime. So just make up your imagination. Let's just say we did it a couple of times here. Uh, you've got some other videos that you've seen from us before. You can go back to the, um, to the fuel filters on the air dog. If you've cycled your key a couple times and it doesn't pick up a prime, fuel doesn't start flowing, you can crack open your filters. Uh, and then, you know, loosen up the airlock on the pump and usually it'll pick up with prime. So we've got uh, fake Santa in the cab of the truck here. We're gonna turn on, just show you flow. Key you on there. You can feel, you can, you can hear, that's plenty of fuel. All right. So what I like to do here is I'll let the, the line drain itself out um, because and the reason why I do it like this is one, I want to see that, that the truck, that the pump is flowing fuel, all the things. Um, but then I'll cut this line off and the, and make my connection after I've done that. That way, you know, you're not cranking on the truck and you're not guessing at whether you've got fuel flow or not. So we'll let that drain out just a little bit, and then we're going to cut this to length and hook it up and and uh, and just pretty much show you our engine shot after that. All right, our good buddies at Fleece Performance sent us this fourth gen fuel filter delete block for this air dog uh, video that we did. And we're gonna install that right now to wrap up this air dog video for you. So this is not a necessary thing, but man, it sure does make it nice. Just getting the stock fuel filter canister out of the engine bay, freeing you up a lot of space, just really, really makes it nice. So we're gonna go through real quick on showing you how to, uh, how to install this really really easy to do so we're going to get set up i've got to get a drain pan here for my fuel so my fuel can drain out the of uh, the canister we'll come back showing you how to install this fuel filter delete block I'll go ahead and show you how to uh, remove this fuel filter canister so we get a lot of calls on this the fuel filter canister is removed from the base uh, and a lot of guys will call us and they get their fuel filter off of here and then they call us and go, hey, your fuel filter to lock doesn't, your fuel filter block doesn't work. Well, it's actually the plate that is behind the fuel filter. And you can see that right there. Uh, the, pl the plate where the return line uh, flows through, the return fuel passing through that, that's what we're actually replacing. So to remove our fuel filter, first thing that we need to do is we need to open up our water and fuel drain on the filter and we let that drain uh, while we're working. And then what I like to do is I like to go ahead and remove my electrical connectors here. Then there's one on the back. I just go ahead and unplug those while this is draining. And then there are three bolts that hold the fuel filter to the base. And they're 10 metrics. There are one, two, and then the third one is on the back of the fuel filter back here. You probably can't see that. Uh, but that is the third bolt that is on the very back. You know what? I'm going to take you around and let you see that bolt. Eh, probably can't see it. Anyway. So we're going to remove those, um, those bolts. And then that'll give us access to the fuel lines to make sure that we can get to that rear fuel line back there where the incoming fuel on the filter is and we'll unhook it and then we can just bring the whole canister pretty much out. Uh, your line will still be right here where you've hooked your air dog line in. We'll take this clip that holds the return and the uh, supply line together on the truck. We won't need those that anymore, so we'll remove that white clip. Uh, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna remove all of this stuff. We're gonna unhook our electrical connectors, take our bolt out, and then just lay the fuel filter canister over so we can get to that back fuel line. We're gonna show you removing the fuel supply line off of this uh, factory filter. Now, I've already pulled the, uh, the safety catch off of the fuel line itself so it's a red uh, it's just a red plastic piece and when i went to push it back it popped out and i haven't found it yet but that's okay so to remove remove this line after you have the safety uh latch off of it the white portion of the of the line you'll push that in well you'll actually push the line itself up 
push the safety catch in and then disengage the line. I've already got it done here, so um, just to make that easy on us. So once you do that, you can just go ahead and lift the fuel filter as an assembly completely out of the engine bay. All right, once we've got our fuel bowl removed from here, then we have to begin removing this entire plate that the fuel bowl actually attaches to. And the first step into that is to go through and cut the zip ties for the trans lines here and then this main wiring harness. Wiring harness, you can do it a couple different ways. It's just got push pins in it. If you just wanna, you wanna leave those intact, you can. I'm gonna cut them, it's just easier um, just to go ahead and get that out of the way. So just use end nips here. And then same thing down here for the trans lines. You just wanna cut those. Uh, zip ties to them like that and just be able to pull this plate free of that and you get your zip ties out of the way whatever then what you're going to do is you're going to go in my opinion it's easiest just to go ahead and remove the fuel lines where they are on the front side of the plate on this and this is a fuel return line is what this is so this just passes through this block then you have the fuel return coming from your CP3 that joins in here. You disconnect the front side of this, the CP3 return side, and then just kind of get it out of your way. And then 17 metric, and you, re you can remove that fitting. Don't worry about the banjo washers that are on these because you get new ones from fleece. And then you want to remove this uh, fuel, this banjo bolt back here as well uh, and get it out of your way. So that's what we're going to do now. And I thought I had my 17 metric up here. And I do so I can kind of show you uh, where these bolts are and how to get to them. So again, these are banjo bolts right here. So you just loosen those up, remove both of those banjo bolts, and that's going to allow you to uh, just move the whole plate past it and then get the one on the back. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get the, both of those banjo bolts out, and then we're going to come back and show you the two mounting bolts for the plate and then removing the plate itself. All right, last thing that we've got to do before we take our uh, filter plate out is we're going to remove the three 10 metric uh, bolts that are holding this to the block. The bolts are here, here, and right between these two lines, there is the third one. And a previous clip, and I don't know why I had this on my mind, I call these trans lines. These are not, these are your power and ground for the starter. Um, so you just want to. Uh, get between these two lines to get that that third bolt out and I just take a take a socket on an extension and we'll we'll just ease that bolt out we do not need that bolt but our top bolts we are going to need There's that bolt there. And then like we said, our two tops, we will be keeping those and reusing them. Go ahead and pop those bolts out. All right. And then to get our plate out, uh, before I take the plate out, the main wiring harness here, it's, it's on a stud. I just release it from that stud. And then I just kind of fold the wiring harness over and then just pull out on the fuel block and just pull straight up and it comes right out. So we're going to show you setting up our uh, fleece performance fuel filter block on this fourth gen truck. So what we want to do first is we want to get the water and fuel sensor rolled over to this block. Now fleece makes provision for you to either not use water and fuel sensor if you don't want to, or you can, you can actually uh, use it. So uh, our O-ring plug here on the front with the coarse threads, that's the one that we're going to remove. And then the water and fuel sensor is here at the bottom of the canister. <coughs> Excuse me. 15 sixteenths. It's not very tight. It's an O-ring sensor. So just go ahead and pull it out of the canister there and then just reinstall it back into your uh, your fleece fuel filter delete block. And then I'll just tighten it up until it's even with the body of the of the delete block. 
like so. So that's pretty much everything that we need to do to have that set up. You also want to uh, test the front, uh, the rear plug here, make sure it's tight so you don't have a fuel leak. And then I just like to blow this block out. Uh, Fleece does a good job of keeping these clean before they leave their facility, but uh, hitting it with a little bit of compressed air, you're gonna get the uh, packing material that gets in here and everything out, make sure everything's cleaned up. Your kit comes with new sealing washers for the banjo bolts. So you just wanna take your banjo bolts that are from the truck and remove the sealing washers that is that are on them then there'll be uh one left usually on this on the line inside the truck so we'll remove those and we'll replace them with our little copper compression washer so we'll do that we'll clean all of this up and then get ready to uh put this back in the truck so when and i want to talk about this out here on the table when we reinstall this on the truck what we like to do is we will actually uh, set our banjo washers up when we get inside the truck and then we'll put our lines on either end here. Okay, actually, and I've got that reversed, but you know what? Right banjo bolt, right side. I will put the banjo bolts in here in the fuel lines and I will leave those loose before I put my bolts in. And remember, we're gonna retain the two bolts that our uh, fuel filter plate came with. I will leave the fuel lines loose, but they will be started into the block and then I will actually tighten the uh, delete block to the engine block itself before I tighten my lines up. Don't want to get anything in the twist with the lines, so that's that's why we do that. So I just want to make mention of that out here why it was um, easy and convenient for you all to see here. So let's get back in the, ca in the uh, engine bay and I'll show you uh, installing this fuel filter delete block. Well, we're back in the engine valley here and Using these copper compression washers, the easiest thing to do is to put a little spot of grease on your fuel uh, filter delete block before you go in the engine bay. And that does a really good job of holding those copper compression washers to the, to the block. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our back one because that's the easiest one to do. And our back banjo bolt is our flat one. So we're gonna do it first. And get it started. Start it like so. And we're going to get our rear bolt in again, and that will hold our fuel block pretty well. And then you'll just want to check, make sure that your copper compression washer survived to the front side. And on the front side, you're going to want to get your uh, your banjo bolt that's got the stem on it you want that stem to be on the front side of the motor so i need to get my mirror check for my uh, copper compression washer uh one thing that i do here when i do this i put a little towel underneath at the at these battery cables just in case i drop that uh, washer so it's caught and it doesn't get lost there so i'm gonna go ahead and again check for that uh make sure that it's there on my back side on the uh, back side of the the fuel filter block and then we'll put this fitting in then we're going to leave this loose and come back with our mounting bolts so we got our uh, banjo bolts in checked and made sure 100 percent that our copper washers were on there just use a little inspection mirror to kind of do that and so got the block loose here i'm just going to clean my greasy fingerprints off the, the nice fleece bling here and then we're going to install the two bolts that held the plate on there's three bolts that held the factory plate on there were two long ones and one short one the two long ones are the ones that we're going to be using here and as we go to install these bolts you'll understand why we left everything 
with our fuel lines loose here. So you just want to get everything into position here, get it back into the factory mounting locations, which Fleece's machining on this is good. It's gonna they're gonna locate back where they're supposed to be. You're not gonna have a whole lot of a whole lot of fight to do with this if, if any at all. So we're gonna get these two bolts tightened up and get the lock where we want it and then we will come back and we will uh, tighten up our fuel lines. All right, we've got our bolts tightened up. Now we're gonna come back and we're gonna tighten down our fuel lines here. Just need to snug these up. They don't have to be super, super tight, but do, do you need to get them do you need to get get them tightened down uh, next step after i do this after i tighten down my fuel lines i'm going to hook my um, i'm going to hook my water and fuel sensor in and then what i will do is i will go in and i will clean up the ancillary parts here that aren't going to be used i'll make sure that this fuel line is out of the way and then this fuel heater electrical connector i'll tape that up just clean that up and make sure that that's not going to be uh, problem for us uh, just to help clean up this engine bay and then I'll go ahead and do that right now water and fuel sensor we will hook that up uh, it'll go this way here so that'll be back in play that'll be in play right there and then that's pretty much going to be it on our uh, on our uh, fuel delete block other than hooking our lines back up is all we need to do here so I'll uh, dress this up get this tightened up here and uh, we will come back and show you the finalized product. So that's a wrap on our AirDog 5G install on our 2018 67 Cummins. And the AirDog 5G uh, pumps are a really, really excellent pump if you guys are looking for an aftermarket uh, lift pump filtration setup. Definitely want to check them out. Super, super quiet, very, very capable. I mean, you've got these pumps on a lot of different uh, truck pulling and racers trucks that are making um, thousands, a thousand horsepower or better. Uh, so they're proven in the field on competition vehicles. They're proven in the field on your stock daily drivers, just like this one right here. So a uh, big shout out to AirDog for sending us a pump for the installation video and a shout out to Fleece as well for sending us their SureFlow and their uh, fuel filter delete that we included in this video. You know, it's not to take away anything from our AirDog installation, the products that they send for their, their install, which will work just fine for you. But Fleece has got a couple different products that makes the installation a little bit cleaner, especially if you're wanting to take the truck back to fully stock when you send it on down the road and then maybe roll these products over into another truck down the road. So that makes it really, really nice. So shout out to AirDog, shout out to Fleece. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions about AirDog or Fleece, just give us a call and thanks for watching.